for today's video we're taking a look at a Lagomassino Numeria model 9203 mechanical calculator made in Italy in the 1950s or 60s. In part one we opened up the machine and freed off the main mechanism, also repairing a couple of damaged components in the keyboard assembly. I'll put a link to that video on screen about now. So now it's time to look at the carriage containing the counter and output registers. The first job is to remove the clearing handle, which simply unscrews. This is actually a split pin that someone has fitted in the past, so I'll make a better replacement before I finish the project. The carriage on the Lagomassino is reasonably similar to the carriage on a Monroe hand-cranked calculator, so some of these steps could be used on both machines. Anyway, next is to remove this spring that puts tension on the two levers that prevent the wheel shafts from turning when the clearing handle is in its resting position. And I'll put that safely in a tray so it doesn't get lost. Now that the spring is off, I can safely move the levers out of the way. Next thing is to remove the output register shaft, firstly by removing the bearing on the drive end. There's a lock nut on the inside and slots for a screwdriver on the outside. There will probably be some shims on the end of the shaft, so take care to note how many were on the end of each shaft. In my case there were three on the drive end of this shaft. This process is repeated for the bearing on the far end of the shaft, again taking note of any shims that might be lurking out of sight. And with the two bearings off, it should be possible to carefully jiggle the shaft free at one end and then remove it completely. Now we can remove the shaft from the clearing handle, which drives these two gears and the carriage lifting shaft. As before, there's a bearing with a lock nut on the inside and a slotted collar on the outside. And now the drive shaft is loose, we just need to disengage it from the two gears. There's a one-way ratchet in each gear, with the spring-loaded pin, or pawl, for each, protruding from the drive shaft. Carefully rotating the outer gear should allow you to withdraw the first, and then the second pin, being careful not to let them ping off somewhere in the room as you remove them. And here's the drive shaft removed, complete with the two spring-loaded pins. And while we're at it, here's one of the gears so you can see the snail cam track that the pin runs in. To remove the second gear we need to drift out the taper pin that attaches it to the carriage lifting shaft. It needs a drift slightly less than one millimetre in diameter. I didn't have one of those, and so I made one of my own. The main shaft is part of a six inch round nail with a one millimetre hole bored in the end, and then the shaft of a broken 0.9 millimetre drill bit cut to length and bonded in place with epoxy resin. I forgot to mention earlier, I've already had this carriage to pieces off camera, and then once I knew how everything came apart, I reassembled it, ready to film the disassembly, so that might explain why some of the parts appear to be coming apart a bit easier than you might expect. Anyway, that's the taper pin drifted out, and I'll put that safely in a tray. On the other end of the carriage lifting shaft there's a bent wire lock ring, which needs to be opened out a little to release it from the groove it sits in, and then the lifting shaft can be withdrawn from its bearing hole. And that frees up the second gear which can now be removed. Next we need to release this rocker assembly and levers on the far end of the carriage. I'll start off by removing the spring that goes between the two levers then the levers can be rotated and lifted away. These were fairly rusted in place when the machine first arrived, so they took a bit of getting out. Now the two grub screws in the rocker assembly can be loosened so the rocker can rotate freely. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier, I scribed alignment marks on all the components before I took the carriage apart, in an attempt to make reassembly easier. And now we can remove the bearings from the far end of the rocker shaft and the counter shaft, remembering, as before, that there will probably be some shims in these. And also the bearing from the drive end of the counter shaft can come out at this stage. 
After all that, we're finally ready to take the counter shaft out. You just need to rotate the rocker shaft away from yourself so the little fingers aren't between the number wheels of the counter. And make sure the rocker assembly on the end of the shaft is out of the way. And now you should be able to slide the counter shaft far enough to the left to release the centre bearing from the carriage chassis and lift the counter shaft out from the right hand end. Lastly, the rocker shaft needs to come out. This has the little fingers that stop the number wheels at zero when resetting the registers. I've already freed up the sliding section that allows you to only reset half of the output register. It's a little bit fiddly to get out. You have to use a screwdriver to gently coax this pin out of the slot in the lever below. But now that's out, it allows us to rotate the rocker shaft so the bottom of the fingers are towards us, which in turn lets us slide the whole shaft to the right to release the left hand end. And don't lose the fairly thick washer that sits on the left hand end of this shaft. Now that everything's apart, it's time to take some number wheels off the counter shaft. Firstly, the drive gear on the end needs to come off. It's held in place by two grub screws, which come out easily enough, but I've already tried to remove the gear off camera and it's stuck fast, so it's time to use a little heat. My usual heat source for these jobs is a hot air gun. This is sold as a hot air embossing gun for card making and the like, but it's also perfect for shrinking heat shrink tube and also freeing off seized parts in mechanical calculators. Just make sure you keep it away from plastic parts and painted surfaces. When I bought mine, they only seemed to be available in pink, but now there seems to be much more choice of colour. Anyway, that should be fairly hot by now. The heat can do two things. It can expand the metal a little, allowing it to move a bit easier. But also, one of the main things that stops these old mechanical calculators is old dried oil and grease. Heating dried oil usually softens it enough to start things moving again, thereby allowing you to introduce some fresh oil to the part or bearing surface. So I'll we'll just see if it's free enough to come off yet. And yeah, that's moving. I'm not going to touch it with my fingers yet because it's still too hot. OK, now the gear and the lever behind it are off, there's a bent wire spring clip that stops the number wheels moving on the shaft. So as before, this needs to be expanded in order to remove it from the groove it sits in. And I really need to get my head where the camera is, so you'll have to do without seeing that bit. Right, the spring clip is off, and now I need to carefully slide the first collar down the shaft. You can grip the collar with a pair of fine nose pliers to slide it, and if necessary tap the pliers with a hammer to assist in moving it. At this point I remove the spring pin from the first collar. I've already got one of these to make, so I don't want to lose or damage this one. Once the collar is off, the first wheel can be removed, followed by the second collar, which is the one that's missing its spring pin. And here we have the second number wheel, with the indexing notches that the pin sits in near the centre, and the two halves of the broken pin, along with the spring itself. And here is the replacement pin that I've just made. It's kind of tiny, at 1.2mm in diameter on the thick end, and 0.8mm in diameter on the tail. I made it out of an old bicycle spoke, because that's a fairly strong steel that I had to hand. I don't have a lathe that'll turn anything this small, so I spun it in a small drill whilst shaping it using a needle file. And here's the number shaft back together, ready to reinstall. Next task is to free up the jammed wheels on the output register. I've now freed up the seized wheels on the output register. In each case it was the indexing pin that was stuck solid. Once each collar was removed, I had to drift the pin out to free it up. Anyway, I can get on with reassembling the shaft now. The wheel goes on first, followed by the collar, with the indexing pin inserted. The collars are a fairly tight fit, so I'm gripping them with pliers and tapping the pliers to move the collar up the shaft, pausing to seat the wheel on the shoulder of the collar before tapping it fully home.
and one fully rebuilt carriage. Now to fit it to the calculator and try it out. OK, I've fitted the carriage back onto the machine, now to give it a quick test. If I want to multiply 256 by 256, first I enter the 256 onto the keyboard, which is easier said than done without the key tops. Then, in the unit's position, I turn the crank handle six times, and then shift the carriage one place to the right, and in the tens column, turn the handle five times. And finally, in the hundreds column, turn the crank handle twice, giving us an answer of 65,536. I think that will do for this video. I'll save the final reassembly and demonstration for part three, which will follow as soon as I've finished making the hundred keys, plus a clearing handle and some feet. I'll put a link to that video in the description once it's done. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get a notification when the next video is released. If this rebuild video has helped you repair a similar machine yourself, and you feel moved to leave a PayPal donation, there's a link down in the description, but that's totally voluntary. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.